So there are numerous videos on YouTube comparing the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and Apple S17 Pro. But most of them lacks the key knowledge about these two chipsets. I have watched them and the level of understanding in those videos are quite lower. So this video aims to provide you with all the essential knowledge you need. Apple and Qualcomm produce some of the best smartphone chipsets such as the Apple S16 Bionic, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 and more. But their latest release, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Apple S17 Pro will continue this trend. And if you are wondering that which one is faster, better, more power efficient, superior in AI performance, cheaper, and which company has taken the performance crown in this generation and by how much. This Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 versus Apple S17 Pro comparison will answer all of your questions. I will cover everything from benchmarks to CPU, from GPU to RAM, from AI capabilities to connectivity. And at the end, I'll provide a clear picture of which one excels in AI, thermals, connectivity, RAM, storage, CPU, GPU, gaming and more. So watch this video until the end as I will explain everything in details. At the beginning, I want to mention that I am comparing the scores from the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra with the 8 Gen 3 and Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max the Apple S17 Pro. In Antutu version 10 benchmarks, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 scores considerably slower compared to other smartphones equipped with this chipset. However, I believe they intentionally reduced the CPU and GPU performance to maintain the chipset's temperature. And I consider this a positive aspect. Nevertheless, the performance of the Galaxy S24 Ultra is slower compared to the OnePlus 12, which also features the same chipset. Despite this, there is a notable 32% performance difference between these two smartphones. The OnePlus 12 with 8 Gen 3 achieved a total score of 2,335,216, highlighting the power of this chipset. Now back to the comparison of the Apple S17 Pro and the 8 Gen 3. The 8 Gen 3 smashed the Apple S17 Pro in the N22 version 10 benchmarks. But it's important to note that the S17 Pro is also still respectable, which scores similar to the Exynos 2400, which I have reviewed recently and I have compared the Exynos 2400 to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So if you are interested, we can also check out that video right here. Back to the video, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 achieved a total score of 1,780,568 points, whereas S17 Pro achieved a total score of 1,577,582 points, making the 8 Gen 3 about 11% faster than the Apple S17 Pro's total N22 version 10 benchmarks. Now breaking down the scores, the CPU of the 8 Gen 3 achieved 441,908 points, while the S17 Pro CPU achieved 388,664 points, making the CPU of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 about 13% faster than the Apple S17 Pro. However, in the GPU scores, the 8 Gen 3's GPU achieved 643,659 points while the A17 Pro's GPU achieved 575,404 points, indicating it is 10% faster than the Apple S17 Pro's GPU scores. This suggests that the A23 will offer severe graphical performance, especially in devices like the OnePlus 12. Nevertheless, the iPhone 15 Pro Max also provides excellent graphical performance, though the Edge Gen 3 takes it a step further. Additionally, the memory scores of the Edge Gen 3 is 371,425 points, compared to the Apple S17 Pro's 267,719 points, making the memory scores of the Edge Gen 3 about 27% faster than the Apple S17 Pro's memory scores. The UX scores of the Edge Gen 3 is 310,914 points, whereas the Apple S17 Pro is 340. 7,834 points, making the UX scores of the Apple S17 Pro about 12% faster than 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. So in the end to do version 10 benchmarks, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is a clear winner. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below that how you see that difference. But the narrative changes when it comes to the Geekbench 6 benchmarks. In the single core performance, the S17 Pro achieved 2,936 points and the 8 Gen 3 achieved 2,291 points, which is about 21% slower than the Apple S17 Pro's single core performance. And this is a huge difference. I mean the single core performance of the Apple S17 Pros is on the level of the desktop processors like the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X and the Intel i9-4900K. But there is not a significant difference when it comes to the multi-core scores. In the multi-core performance, the Edge Gen 3 achieved 7142 points whereas the Apple S17 Pro achieved 7364 points making the multi-core scores of the Apple S17 Pro about 
3% faster than a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So this is not a significant difference. But yeah, the CPU performance of the A70 Pro is actually very good compared to other chipsets on this category. This marks the first time that the 8 Gen 3 and the Apple A17 Pro's multi-core scores don't have a substantial difference, with the Qualcomm chip being closer to the Apple A17 Pro's than ever before. In terms of 3D wildlife benchmarks, the 8 Gen 3 clearly excels. In the graphics test, it achieves a substantial 98 FPS, while the A17 Pro achieved 59 FPS. The 8 Gen 3 claims the title of the faster chipset with a score of over 16,530, whereas the Apple A17 Pro's has a score of 1,008, representing a substantial 39% difference. So this is a huge difference if you compare both of these chipsets. So that's why 8 Gen 3 claims the title of the fastest chipset on the planet, the smartphone category. Here are some other benchmarks, as you can see. The asset compression rate on the 8 Gen 3 is faster, as well as HTML browser, PDF rendering, image detection, and HDR. Whereas the background blur is faster than Apple A17 Pro, as well as photo processing and ray tracing. So in this benchmarks, the 8 Gen 3 is a clear winner. So if you are a performance user like gamer or content creator or some other heavy stuff that you do, then you should really go with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy as it will handle any task you throw into it and will give you results faster. And if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel will be astonishing. So both of these chipset CPUs are excellent, offering robust architectures with a diverse range of core configuration. The 8 Gen 3 stands out by providing 8 cores, whereas the Apple S17 Pro provides 6 cores. But that doesn't mean the S17 Pro lags behind the 8 Gen 3. You will see that in a minute. So let's delve into these scores. The Apple S17 Pro's ultra fast cores are the first in the industry to clock at 3.78 GHz. You see that 3.78 GHz. I mean no other chipset on the smartphone category has ever crossed that point. I mean they have never crossed 3.5 GHz mark. So that's why the Apple S17 Pro CPU is a remarkable engineering. And the clock speed of this chipset is significantly faster than the 8 Gen 3's Cortex X4 cores. Additionally, the Apple S17 Pro has 4 high performance scores based on Sawtooth clock at 2.11 GHz. Awesome, right? Well, not. Here comes the king of the chipsets. The 8 Gen 3 features one ultra fast core based on Cortex X4 clock at 3.3 GHz. The high performance scores based on Cortex S120 clock at 3.15 GHz. Two additional high performance scores based on Cortex S120 also clock at 2.96 GHz. And finally, two power efficient score based on Cortex A520 clocked at 2.26 GHz. This core configuration impressively covers a spectrum from ultra fast to power efficient cores, offering a well rounded performance. But keep in mind that the Apple S17 Pro has the fastest CPU on the planet. I mean, if you compare the Android 2 version 10 benchmarks of both of these chipsets, the Apple S17 Pro may lose. But in the Geekbench 6, you guys saw that the Apple S17 Pro smashed the 8 Gen 3 in a single core performance. And this has been the story since the beginning. Apple CPUs are faster than the Qualcomm CPUs in terms of the Geekman 6 performance. Like for instance, I recently reviewed the Apple S16 Bionic and that chipset's single core scores and multi-core scores are still faster than this 8 Gen 3 chipset. You can watch this video right here if you are interested. Well, here is the detailed comparison. The two ultra fast cores of the Apple S17 Pro had the fastest clock speeds Compared to the 8 Gen 3's high performance scores, the 8 Gen 3 Cortex X4 core is clocked at 3.3 GHz, the Apple S17 Pro 2 average scores are clocked at 3.78 GHz, which is awesome. Additionally, the 8 Gen 3 has the latest instruction set of ARM version 9.2-A, while the Apple S17 Pro has the older ARM version 8.6-A instruction set architecture. The 8 Gen 3 is manufactured using TSMC 4 nanometer process node, while the Apple S17 Pro is manufactured by TSMC 3 nanometer processor node, which makes the Apple S17 Pro power efficient, right? Well, not entirely. There has been so much talk about the heat up issues in the iPhone 15 Pro Max with the Apple S17 Pro chipset, so it's not entirely efficient. Plus, the Apple S17 Pro has 19 billion transistors, but some of the websites claim that the 8 Gen 3 has over 23 billion transistors. If you talk about the TDP, the TDP of the Apple S17 Pro is about 8 watts. While the 8 Gen 3 is 12.5 watts. And yes, the Apple S17 Pro has over 24 megabytes of L3 cache memory. While the 8 Gen 3 has 12 megabytes of L3 cache memory. So that was the CPU aspect, but the entire storage changes when it comes to the GPU performance of both of these two chipsets. 
Let me explain. If you recall earlier, the GPU scores on the Edge 23 were approximately 10% faster than the Apple S17 Pro. Well, here is the reason why. The Edge 23 features the Adreno 750 GPU, part of the Adreno 700 architecture. This GPU stand out as one of the fastest, offering to execution units 1536 chatting units with a frequency of 770 MHz. On the other hand, the S17 Pro offers Apple S17 GPU, belonging to the Apple GPU architecture. This GPU features 6 execution units, 128 shading units, and 768 shaders, which is less than the 8 Gen 3's 1536 shaders. And the Apple GPU operates at a clock speed of 1398 MHz. So the 8 Gen 3 GPU achieved 4730.8 gigaflops, and the Apple S17 Pro GPU achieved 2147.2 gigaflops, making it significantly slower compared to the 8 Gen 3's GPU. This is the key reason for the 8 Gen 3's enormous GPU scores. But the Apple S17 Pro has a fastest CPU but the 8 Gen 3 has the fastest GPU. And also, I have reviewed both of these two chipsets, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Apple S17 Pro. You can find the links in the description. So please do check it out if you are interested, where I have explained everything from gaming connectivity and many more. So watch that videos if you are interested. The RAM and storage options on the 8 Gen 3 are faster and better than the Apple S17 Pros. The 8 Gen 3 RAM is based on a quad-channel LPDDR5X RAM with a memory frequency of 4800 MHz. While the Apple S17 Pro RAM is based on a single channel LPDDR5 with a memory frequency of 4200 MHz. This difference in clock speeds contribute to h 3s achieving better scores in the N22 version 10 memory tests, boosting up to 27% better performance compared to the Apple S17 Pro. The h 3 can support up to 24GB of maximum RAM, while the Apple S17 Pro can only support up to 8GB. Furthermore, the Edge Gen 3 offers UFS 4.0 storage technology and the Apple S17 Pro offers NVMe storage technology. The faster RAM and storage give the Edge Gen 3 a 77 gigabits per second max bandwidth, while the Apple S17 Pro has a max bandwidth of 51.2 gigabits per second, which is slower compared to the Edge Gen 3's max bandwidth. When it comes to connectivity, the Edge Gen 3 clearly excels, particularly in download and upload speeds. Let's delve into the details. The Edge 3 is equipped with the Snapdragon X75 modem, now for its exceptional network capabilities. It boosts the most 5G bands, providing superior efficiency and performance, with download speed of up to 10,000 Mbps and upload speed of up to 3,500 Mbps. So this is remarkable. On the other hand, the S17 Pro features the Snapdragon X70 modem, which is also commendable. While it offers slightly slower download and upload speeds, it still performs admirably with download speed of up to 7,500 Mbps and upload speed of up to 3,500 Mbps. Although the upload speeds are similar, a significant difference emerges in download speeds. Users will undoubtedly notice this difference. If you are downloading on Apple S17 Pros, iPhone 15 Pro Max, or the 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy, the S24 Ultra. Moreover, the 8 Gen 3 with the Qualcomm FastConnect 7800 is once again responsible for local communication, capable of handling Bluetooth 5.4 with LE audio and Wi-Fi 7. On the other hand, the S17 Pro features Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3. While there are not many Wi-Fi 7 routers available, this feature does make the 8 Gen 3 a step ahead of the Apple S17 Pro. So both of these chipsets have on-device AI capabilities. But somehow, the agent excels when it comes to the generative AI. Let me explain. The integrated hexagon NB on the agent 3 is about 98% faster than its predecessor and promises a 40% improvement in efficiency. Qualcomm's AI engine is the first to support multi-model generative AI models, including LLM, LVM, and ASR, and can process up to 10 trillion parameters directly onto the chipset and 34 trillion operations per second. In addition, the NB of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen is also capable of INT4 and Meta Lemma 2. Now when it comes to the AI performance on the Apple S17 Pro, this chipset has its own neural cores. The 16-core neural engine is now capable of 35 trillion operations per second, while Apple hasn't put as much emphasizes on AI this time around, with a lot more focus being on the boost on the CPU and GPU performance. S17 Pro doesn't have as much AI. So in this case, the Edge Gen 3 clearly wins with its own device generative AI features. I mean, there are a lot of features that the Apple S17 Pro can't do in the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max, whereas the Edge Gen 3 for Galaxy is known for its exceptional AI capabilities in the S24 Ultra. 
The Snapdragon 823 is not a straightforward competitor to the Apple S17 Pro since they are destined for different smartphone ecosystems. But if you are considering jumping from iPhone to Android or vice versa, you will be happy to know that both chipsets are truly high-end piece of silicon. Sure. We have few reservations about the sustained performance of the Qualcomm's chip but its graphic capabilities still look impressive. And daily smartphone usage will absolutely fly with this chipset. Not forgetting that the agent is packed to the rafter with best-in-class AI and networking capabilities. So I give the winner to the agent 3. It's better CPU, faster GPU, faster RAM, faster storage, faster connectivity, astonishing on-device AI capabilities camera performance and many more. Therefore, the Edge Gen 3 will give you better performance than the Apple S17 Pro. But don't think that the S17 Pro is a bad chipset. In some cases, it's even better than the Edge Gen 3. But it's better for iPhones only. While the Edge Gen 3 is better for all smartphone manufacturers like OnePlus, iQ, Vivo, Xiaomi, Samsung, Realme and many more. So here is a full comparison video of both of these chipsets. And as you know making a video like this takes a lot of time on researching, scripting, writing, shooting, editing and uploading. So if you enjoyed this content, smash that like button and share your thoughts in the comment section below. And also 97.8% of you haven't subscribed to my channel. So please subscribe and hit the bell icon to never miss a detailed comparison video like this one. Your feedback is highly appreciated as it motivates content creators like us to make the best videos possible. So your subscribing and liking this video will mean the world to me. So please do it. So my name is Samza, this is Hashtag and see you in the next video. If you want to watch the full review comparison of the 8 Gen 3 versus the Exynos 2400 then that video is right here. And if you want to watch the full review of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 then that video is right here. Thank you for watching.